Laura Beth Nielsen is a sociology professor at Northwestern University. In a recent piece for the LA Times, she argued for rolling back free speech in America. She argued that free speech, quote, protects the powerful and the popular. She also argues that hate speech can cause physical effects, PTSD, harmful ailments like perpetuating discrimination and creating inequality. Professor Nielsen joins us tonight to explain. Um, so, Professor, when I read your piece, which I thought was interesting and provocative, I kept, the question that kept arising was, is speech protected on the basis of its veracity? What if you say something that offends somebody else, maybe even causes the injuries that you describe, and we're just going to assume for the sake of argument those are real, but it's true. Is that protected? Well, well, thanks for having me on, and that's a, that's a great question. It would be a much harder uh, case to talk about if they were true, but I'm talking about the kind of speech that we know to not be true, that singles people out on the basis of race and is done with that, or sex, or other protected category, characteristics and categories, and is done with the intent to intimidate. Right, so I'm not talking about sort of debatable political ideas. I'm not talking about. Oh no, 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 um, no! I'm, I'm talking feelings. about. I'm talking about what you're saying. So if I were to say, for example, a lot of Scandinavians are drunks, I'm Scandinavian. That yeah. might hurt my feelings, but it's provably true that Scandinavians have higher alcoholism rates than I don't know Italians or Greeks, and so that would be singling me out on the basis of my ethnicity and attacking me, making me feel bad. But it would also be true. So like, would that be allowed? It also it wouldn't. No, because I think it would be very difficult for you to show that it actually caused some kind of harm to you. I'm not talking about hurt feelings. I'm talking about pervasive discrimination. And the Supreme Court actually has opened the door to this in the most recent cross-burning case. Clarence Thomas wrote a concurring opinion about um, burning crosses and what they must always mean. The other justices were a little more reserved about it, but they, the Supreme Court has said hate speech when done with the intent to intimidate can be regulated. And so I'm here to talk about my research and a lot of other people's research that shows the harms of intimidating hate speech are pretty real. So Hillary Clinton during the campaign attacked the white working class in a bunch of different ways, most famously by calling them deplorable. This is a group whose life expectancy is declining, massively high rates of opioid addiction. So you could make the case that she's mm -hmm. hurting them physically. Would you have banned her speech? Well, I think that would be a great kind of test case if we passed legislation that recognized the harms of hate speech of protected categories and that would surely be a case that could be made. I'll tell you that the What's physiological research... What's a protected research, category? What's a protected, protected well, race, category? for example. Race is a protected category. The okay. kinds of things so, we protect in Title but, but VII... But, but, but what do you clause. think? I mean, I'm not talking about what Congress should do. I mean, as a legal scholar, you argue that some speech should be banned. Would that speech that she gave, would that be banned? Would you ban it? Well, the statute would have to be written in a content-neutral kind of way, and then somebody would have to complain about the speech, and then somebody would have to be subject to a lawsuit. I don't criminal, civil. It could be a ticket, like a you know, like a speeding ticket kind of thing. And then there would have to be a constitutional, you know, determination process. We're not going to figure that out in you know. But you're five talking process. You're, you're talking process. I'm, I'm, but I'm trying to figure yes. out about intent and the, the, the philosophy behind this. Do you think? that attacking a group of people on the basis of their race, as she did, should that be banned or not? I mean, if you were in charge, would you ban that, or wouldn't you? Well, I think the question for politicians is really, really hard, right? You have the same question with Donald Trump today, um, with his tweet, and I think politicians would have to be sort of separated out in a way. But like, let's imagine that some you know, personality said it on TV. I think there should be intimidation and and a threat of violence, right? I mean, this is the Facebook algorithm for hate speech. So there has to be not just that they're drunks, but they're drunks and they're useless and we need to go kill them all. Or they're drunks okay. and they're useless and I wouldn't mind if the, you know, people mowed them down. And I think okay, there's but, an interesting... But that's a different... Cat that's, I, I wonder though, whatever happened to... Remember when there were liberals who defended free speech? There were free speech absolutists who used to say things oh like... Oh, my God, I'll... I remember. Do you I remember, remember them? them? No. And then they all became fascists. Do you remember that? And they decided we're going to punish no, you for saying things we don't like. Fascists. Well, a lot of them did, no, like the no. ones who wanted to, wanted to curtail the freedom of speech that we've grown up with. I mean, I'm those ones. Well, but whatever happened... Legal and... 
in the legal academy, it's a pretty small group. I will tell you that. Uh -huh. But one of the um, it, one of the really interesting things, Tucker, is that um, when you go out and talk to people. So I'm a social scientist and a legal scollar. And when you go ask people, and I include white men in my research, you know, something I get How a little bit of, of flack about. Yeah, I mean, who I cares know, what they and think? I get I a little agree. bit of flack about it. Yeah. But I'm telling you that they don't experience these harms in public. Oh, they don't feel okay. excluded from public places. Oh, they don't. Okay. They don't. Not to generalize about a whole group on the basis of their race or anything. <laughs> To record the social well, science speaking evidence. for all white men, if you if you don't mind. Okay. I, I when was the last time, time somebody told you how they were going to rape you? I don't know. Right. I you're mean, protected from somebody that, asking you for money, idea, Tucker. I, I guess you're I, protected I guess, from somebody asking you for money, I, but I'm I not treat protected professor, from somebody professor, telling you they're going to rape me. I, I tend I treat people as individuals, not as racial me categories. Too. I don't think you yes. do actually. Because you're generalizing well, if on the basis of race, which I used can, to be considered repugnant, percentage. but I guess now it's common enough we don't notice. But I do. No, I'm telling okay. you that 38 okay. percent of African Americans report mm -hmm. being targeted for racist speech every I'm, day. I'm not, I'm not denying and it's that. About I'm just saying. Four percent of white oh. men report that. Okay. I well, interview that doesn't, them. That I doesn't ask count them. That. Okay. Well, it sounds like you've got the numbers on your side. Professor, thanks a lot for joining us, Dan. Yeah, we appreciate I do. It. Thanks for having mm -hmm. me. This was really fun.